So when we talk about a ratio, all we're doing is, is a way of comparing one type of quantity with another type of quantity that's of the same type. Okay, so basically we're saying that it has to be able to be written in the same unit. Okay, so weight with weight, length with length, you know, certain type of other quantities, money with money, okay, number of people with number of people. You can't have a ratio of money to length. Okay, that's a rate. And we're going to get on to that later. A rate is where you have two different things compared to each other. For example, kilometers per hour is a rate. Comparing distance with time. Okay, how much distance you cover over a certain time. Whereas a ratio is comparing like with like, the same sort of thing. So we use this notation, A to B, this colon, as it's called. So it's 4 to 5, that's the rate 4 to 5. Or 3 to 2, it's called 3 to 2. So basically what it's saying is, there's three parts of something, and then there's two parts of something. You're comparing three parts of one quantity, two parts of another quantity, of the same thing. So you could have something like three to two in terms of kilograms, so you could have three kilograms to two kilograms, saying that for every three kilograms of apples, you buy two kilograms of oranges. Okay, that's the ratio that you purchase fruit at, or something like that. Or typically you might have a cement mix, where you have three parts water, two parts sand, one part cement. So you can have more than one, more than two parts in a ratio. You can have three parts, but the idea is you're comparing like things. You're comparing the same thing. That's really important. And so we can also simplify ratios by dividing both sides by any common factor. So it's actually very similar, or it's actually the same as fractions. Something over something, you can cancel out any common factors. That's the same with ratios. So if you have something like 10 to 5, you can divide both sides by 5 and go to 2 to 1. Okay, so we just divide both sides by the same factors and you can simplify that ratio. Alright? And so you want to have it in simplest form to get an idea of how to compare these two. 2 to 1 is much more useful than 100 to 2. Okay? So I think that's the important thing. So a ratio, we've all seen before. Has anyone not seen a ratio before? Right, you use it in cooking, in mixing things, in all sorts of contexts is it used? And so we have the idea of a ratio. Now try to look at the first example. There are seven boys and 21 girls in a classroom. Write the ratio of boys to girls. What's the ratio of boys to girls? That's true, simplest form. So we'll write it first as it is. So it's seven, it's seven boys to 21 girls. That's all it's asking you to do. When you write a ratio, it says seven, hold on, which means two, 21. You're comparing the seven boys to the 21 girls. Now what's the common factor on each side here? Seven. So if we divide both sides by seven, what happens? What is that? One, two, three. And what this is telling us is that for every one boy in a class, there's three girls. Okay, so that's what the ratio is telling us. For every one boy, there's three girls. Or well, another way to say it is for every seven boys, there's 21 girls. But I think this is more useful. You can see that for every one boy, there's three girls. What's the ratio of boys to girls in this class? <laughs> Chelsea, did you find out? Chelsea, did you find out what the ratio of boys to girls is? Eight boys. So it's eight to boys to girls, the ratio is eight to fourteen. And simplify that. What's the common factor between eight and fourteen? Two. So it's divided by two. So it's four to seven. So what that's saying is that for every four boys in the class, there's seven girls. So that's basically it in terms of ratio. Oh, and we wrote that in simplest form already. Okay, so it's a very straightforward sort of concept. It's saying you want to simplify it so that you can understand more about it. You're comparing like with like. Boys and girls are both people. They're all humans. True? Maybe you don't agree. 
anyway, we are all human, and so we're comparing like with like. Alright? Now, if we have a look at the next one, a detergent needs to be mixed in with water in the ratio of 25 ml to 2,000 ml. Write the ratio in its simplest form. Okay, you sh I should have specified here, write the ratio of detergent to water. Because it depends. If it's water to detergent, you put the quantity of the water first and then the detergent. Or if it's detergent to water, you write it like that. So it's important to read the question carefully. Generally speaking, if you have a question like this, and the detergent is mentioned first, and the water is mentioned second, and then it says 25 to 2,000, two, two sorry, then we should write it at 25 to 2,000. So let's write it like that, 25 to 2,000. What's the common factor here, Amazon? Five is a common factor. What's the highest? 25. What's 2,000 divided by 25? So if we mm. so if we divide both sides by 25, we get 1 to 80. So you don't need to write the units here because it's assumed that the units are the same. They have to be the same for this to work. Right? So we do 1 to 80. So what this is saying, for every one part of detergent, we have 80 parts of water. Okay? So that's the way that we think about it. One part. So whatever quantity, we can use this, and we're going to later do this. From now, if we have this ratio, we know that whatever quantity of detergent we have, we know how much water we use. Or we, we know that how much water we have, we know how much detergent we use. Because we can use this ratio to find out that it is this information. Okay? Now, the next one we have here is we have a recipe for a large cake requires 40 grams of salt for 2 kilograms of flour. Write the ratio of flour to salt in simplest form. Now what's the first thing that we notice about these quantities? They're different. Well, they're both weights, but what do we notice about them? What's different? Yeah, one gram and one kilogram. So Thomas, what do we have to do? Yeah, that's right. We need to convert them to the same unit. So that's a really important thing. Because otherwise your, your ratio is going to be all wrong. If you did 40 to 2, that would simplify to 20 to 1. And it would, you'd be saying that you need 25 salt for every one part of flour. So clearly that's not correct. Alright, so we need to make sure that we're changing the unit. So if we change the unit, what if 2 kilograms of flour in grams? What's 2 kilograms of flour in grams? 2,000. Okay, so if we write that, we write that as a ratio, and it says ratio of flour to salt. So we need to do 2,000 to 40. What's the common factor? Highest common factor, 40 and 2,000. 40. What's 2,000 divided by 40? 50. So we need to divide by 40. And so what this is saying is 50 to 1, there's 50 parts of flour for every one part of salt. And so now you can go ahead and say, well, if you wanted to make a smaller cake with only half a kilogram of flour, you would know how much salt to put. Okay, so this is an important idea to simplify ratios, you divide both sides. You can also have ratios of more than two parts. You might have three parts or four parts. All you have to do to simplify it is divide each part by the common factor. So you'll be able to simplify it, write it in simplest form. Okay? Are there any questions? So exercise 301, 1 to 7, first column, and then question 12, A, C, E. And we've got 15 minutes. We should be able to get to a reasonable amount. So let's go ahead and do that.